So let's talk about managing mailboxes in uh, Office 365 Exchange Online. Now, before we dive into this, need to remember that we can assign a mailbox to a user as long as that user has a license that will allow us to use a mailbox with them. For example, I'm going to come to my Users tool and click my drop down and choose Active Users. And I have two users here. You see me and I have a Microsoft 365 Business Standard license. And then I have George Smith that's currently unlicensed. Now, when you create a user, you can choose to assign a license to them at that point. And then you can create a mailbox for them. You can also create a mailbox for them um, in the Exchange Admin Console, which we'll look at in a minute. So if I want to assign a license to somebody to allow them to have a mailbox, I can click on the username. And then up here, I can choose licenses and apps. Now, I am currently on a trial copy of it, so I have no more licenses available. But here it tell me how many licenses I had and which kind, and then I could select the license that I wanted to and save changes. And that would assign a license that would then allow them to use the exchange online. However, I don't have that at the moment, so we're just going to work with the ones that we have. Now, there's two different ways to manage this. I can manage, let me open up my account here. So I can manage some things from here. So I can go to mail and I can have, I have some mail apps that I can allow them access to and mailbox permissions. And so here I've got a handful of mail options that I can use for specific users and their associated mailboxes. I have more options, however, if I come down to Admin Centers, and if I go to the Exchange Admin Center, I'm going to have more options here. So I'm going to come here and we're going to play with mailboxes from here. Now, under Recipients, you're going to see four different options. Mailboxes, Groups, Resources, and Contacts. Now, we'll dive into those in just a minute. But before we do, I want to scroll down a little bit and show you this right here, the Classic Exchange Admin Center. Now, this is the EAC that was included with Microsoft Exchange 2016 on-premise, or pretty close to it. So this should look, if you're familiar with Exchange 2016, this will look really, really familiar. It's because it's basically the same thing, just poured it over here. But this is our classic one. This is not the new Exchange Admin Center, which Microsoft is encouraging everyone to use. That is right here. So we're going to go ahead and go through the current one just on the off chance that Microsoft gets rid of the classic one at some point. So let's start with mailboxes. So I'm going to come to under recipients mailboxes and this is going to show me my mailboxes. Now, if I uh, if I have a any kind of mailbox will show up here. So if I have a user that has a mailbox like my account here, you'll see that it's here, but you will you'll see that George Smith isn't here and that's because he doesn't have a mailbox. And I can't add a mailbox to George Smith because he doesn't have a license for it. So that's why I need to go back to the licensing now, options here, I can add a shared mailbox. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Set default message size restrictions, and then export. Now, if I want to do most of my administration, I'm going to have to click on the user itself. All right, let's walk through our options here. This shows our email addresses, and we're going to have several different types. So when I go to manage, you'll see I have an SIP, an SPO, and SMTP, and I can edit or delete any of these. You'll notice the SMTP one doesn't give me the option to delete. That's because that's the primary mailbox or the reply address. Now I can add additional email addresses here. Just click add and then I can choose which type and set the email address. And I can choose to make that the reply address as well if I wanted to. And remember frequently when we're working with Exchange in a corporate environment, <clears throat> Exchange Online, we're going to have the on Microsoft.com domain and then the actual domain that the company is really using. And so what we'll probably do is go through and set these to be that domain rather than the on Microsoft.com. 
All right, so that's where I can manage my email addresses. Down here, I can set my mailbox permissions. And you're going to have three different permissions. So read and manage, send as, and send on behalf of. Now what this does is this allows another user to have these permissions on this mailbox. So if I give another user read and manage, that means that other user could open my mailbox, could look at my mail, could read my messages, and could manage my mailbox for me. This used to be called full control which wasn't really actually full control, but that's what it was called anyway. And you'll notice I currently have nobody who has that permissions. So I can click edit and I can add in another user here to have that read and manage permission on my mailbox. And I'll do that sometimes, like say if we have an executive and they have a secretary who needs to be able to check their email and prioritize things for them. So send as will let another user send as me. So let's say I had an administrative assistant and I wanted them to be able to send an email so I didn't have to, them to be able to send it and have it look like it came from me. Then I would give them send as permissions. And then send on behalf of is kind of similar, except it says that it was sent on behalf of me rather than actually looking like it came directly from me. Okay, so more actions. We can convert this to a shared mailbox. We can manage litigation holds. We can manage the mailbox archive, set the recipient limits, recover deleted items, or set custom attributes. So convert to shared mailbox will allow multiple users to have access to the same mailbox. And the idea here is this is going to be a group mailbox. It's not going to be the primary mailbox for anybody. But let's say, for example, we had a help desk mailbox and we want it to be a shared mailbox so that all of our help desk users could access that shared mailbox that would be a, a reason for it and they could open up their own mailbox they could also open up the shared mailbox and see any mail that came in there litigation hold has to do with blocking things from being deleted because of pending litigation archiving will allow things to be archived to a location outside of the mailbox so it doesn't count against the mailbox limits. Those are the most common ones we'll deal with here. So email apps. These are the apps that are allowed or that the user is allowed to use to manage this mailbox. So we can use Outlook on the web, Outlook Desktop using the MAPI protocol, Exchange Web Services, Exchange Active Sync for mobile devices, IMAP and POP3. Now by default all of these are enabled. If I want to disable them, I just check on each one of these, disable those settings, and then hit save. And now they can no longer use those settings or those apps to access this mailbox. All right, a couple of more here real quick. Mail flow settings. Default message size and delivery settings are applied. If I want to change that, I go here. I can change my email forwarding so I can have it automatically forward somewhere else. My message size restrictions, what's the maximum amount of or maximum size that can be sent or received, and then message delivery restrictions. So let's go ahead and click on that. We can accept messages from all senders, selected senders, and we can block senders. Now, this is not actually a good way to control spam, but it does have some advantages. So let's say I want to accept uh, messages only from specific users. Well, that's where I would select use selected senders. And then I would add the senders that were allowed to send to this mailbox. Now, typically, we won't do that for mailboxes that are going to be external. But for internal mailboxes, we might want to do that. And we can use asterisks when we do this. So let's say I had a help desk mailbox. I could allow from, and then I could choose, not that one, asterisk at and then I could put my domain company.com okay and the idea here being that I will try to allow or deny messages from specific users now obviously that's not one that we recognize so that's going to create a problem but hopefully it illustrates the idea so by doing that we can keep messages from coming in that we don't necessarily want to go here all right so that's our message delivery restrictions. Mailbox policies. 
Let's go ahead and manage. We can have a sharing policy, a role assignment policy, a retention policy, and address book policy. Now the address book policy, the idea here is we might have, if we've got a large organization, we might have more than one address book to make things a little bit more manageable. Sharing policy, am I going to, by default, share information with other users in my company? Retention policy, how long am I going to manage or how long am I going to maintain emails that come into this mailbox? All of these are set to default at the moment. If I want to edit them, I come up here to edit and then I can choose additional policies if I've defined them. And at the moment, we haven't defined any other policies. So, But I did want to show you where you could manage that. Okay. So that gives us an idea of what we can set on our mailboxes. And if you are managing Exchange, the vast majority of what you do is going to be inside this group. A lot of it will be with mailboxes. And then to a lesser extent, groups, resources, contacts, and shared mailboxes. Okay. So that should give you an idea of how we manage mailboxes we'll take a look at groups resources and contacts here in just another in a minute in another video